All right, welcome back everybody to Coffee. Where is it? <laughs> Coffee and Art on a Friday morning. Hope everybody's going to stay safe during the hurricane down there on the Texas Gulf Coast. And uh, yeah, so we already did a mixed media collage in an altered book. Uh, well, I'll just show it to you real quick. This is the piece we just finished. And so, and there's a, and hopefully the video will be fine and y'all can see that. And so uh, after that, we start talking a little bit about books and I said, well, well I'll try to show some of my altered books. Um, and I, I did pull a couple that are mixed media altered book collage, but if we have time, I've got another stack of collage books, but I just pulled about 12 14 books for now and they're they're not anything brand new um, there's probably some newer ones out there but I'm going to show you the ones that I have on my art bookshelf and then if we run it you know if we get finished with these I'll show some collage mixed media ones that are specifically geared toward collage but these two I went uh, these were downstairs I've, I've run out of space up here so some of them are downstairs. But anyway, um, Terry's already getting uh, links for these. Okay, so this one is Finding Your Visual Voice, A Painter's Guide to Developing an Artistic Style. So we're doing a lot of mixed media collage, altered books, and all different kinds of stuff. But if you're, and this is more geared toward painting totally your own style. But I just kind of thought I'd throw this one in here too. And I'll try to tell you the author, the, this is by Northlight, uh, this one's by Dakota Mitchell with Lee Haroon, and it came out in, when did it come out? Let's see, 2007. So this one came out in 2007, and it's kind of like a spiral bound book, so it lies flat if you're working projects out of it, you know. Uh, if y'all have any questions, is it is it light enough? I, maybe I need to brighten this up just a little. It looks a little dark because the sun, the sun is not out because of the uh, impending rain coming here. Not to do with the hurricane, just uh, just rain. But it made it a little dark in here. So if y'all have any questions, put them in caps. If you're watching a recording, thanks for being here, and or thanks for watching. So a little bit about the authors and everything. So I'm going to kind of just go over like the chapter titles and do flip throughs and just give you all some ideas of what you, you know, what's out there. Again, you probably, some of these are probably really inexpensive because they've been out a while. And this might even be in a paperback version now or soft cover. Hey, Julie, anybody else popping in? So discover your sources of inspiration discover your subject matter, discover your art elements, discover your composition style, and excuse the paint, guys, like I said, we just got done doing that other project. I got as much off as I could with just water, soap and water, but I need to get my craft scrubby out to get the rest of this off. Discover your painting process. So, listening to your voice, what is your visual voice? I'll just, I'll read a couple paragraphs. Your visual voice is a combination of instincts and feelings that encourage you to pick up a paintbrush and create work that is your own. Your vo visual voice is intuitive, not intellectual, or consciously guided by reason. Although, I think that if you're, they may be more referring to, uh, like a painting, like right out of your imagination or something. Uh, if you're drawing, like if you're doing a painting outdoors and painting a, a scene right there, or if you've taken photographs of something and you're painting from that, it's not like you're, you're going to put your spin on it. You're going to put your style to it, but it's not like that's just going to pop into your head. Like you're not just going to take your paintbrush and your paints and your palette and go outside and just sit there and close your eyes and bam, you know. <laughs> You're going to have uh, years or, or, you know, months or, you know, at some point, some amount of time in study and and research. You have to know your supplies. If you don't know what oil paint's going to do, you just can't just take an oil brush paint and brush out there and, and it's going to just pop out there. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's going to be some 
uh, amount of research and study and knowledge of your supplies so when they're saying intuition and not intellectual that doesn't mean that you don't know what your supplies are going to do it doesn't mean you can y'all follow what i'm saying know what i mean Vern? <laughs> so i just kind of want to like i clarify that because i don't want anyone to get the impression that oh it's nothing to do with your thinking process it's not anything to do with intellect it's all about feelings well that's not exactly true <laughs> it's you know uh and it, again it depends on the the type of art the project well if you're illustrating a book for somebody for example and they say, you know, use your imagination and, you know, we kind of, we want this. We have these kids that we want drawn in there and we want them to be dancing in the rain or whatever. You can't just go off your feelings and, it, and not use your brain. Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? You got to use your mind too. So, uh, just. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. That doesn't mean you don't use your brain. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, different focuses, whether it's on, and it, it probably, she probably addresses this again. I'm not going to read the whole book. I'm just going to skim these. It's got some different artists here, a couple of different artists uh, and their process, asking them questions. Um, how do you push colors beyond what you see? What's your process? Why, you know, those kind of questions for the individual artist. Uh, and then after the end of each chapter, they have a question and answer thing. Uh, where what did you get out of the, the examples and how, does, how can it apply to you? <laughs> I'm an alarm clock, yeah. Uh, and that squeak you hear, that, that does kind of bother me. <laughs> it's the squeak of the paper on the, on the uh, spiral. Then discover your uh, subject matter. And again, if you're going to be, a, you know, if you want fine art paintings, um, you know, that this is more for you than, say, mixed media or altered books. But I have this one down there. I wanted to pull this one off the shelf. And again, different different artists are uh, are profiled, and then they're asked questions, and then they give you a question and answer thing in the back of each uh, chapter to help you discover your style. And when I say style, these are all paintings. It's not like they're not manga, they're not comic book, they're not they're not even really illustrative styles in the sense of well, there's kind of but it's mostly fine painting painting you know a painter's guide if y'all have any questions ask because like i said i'm just going to briefly flip through these not anything really in depth this one's called art escapes daily exercises and inspiration for discovering greater creativity and artistic confidence by dory Cantor. and Again, it's a little spiral down. This one's not squeaking as much. <laughs> and um, so, again, like it says, this is exercises. They give you prompts and, you know, prompts and uh, guidance. And then you, you do the projects or, you know, take what they tell you and turn it into a project based on what you've learned. This one is 2000 and is it five or three? Three. This one's 2003. So y'all see, you know, mixed media and altered stuff. It's been around for a long, long time. Uh, I think things go in cycles. Um, art journaling and, and things go in cycles. I mean, like art cards, art, you know, ATCs and artist cards and things like that. And then, you know, we, uh, we have adapted that into art journaling. And then we take collage. We adapt that to our art journaling. So we're always adapting the different techniques and things into what we want to do with them. <laughs> squeaky page yeah okay so the table of contents assemble your supplies for creativity have fun and keep it simple opportunities for everyday creative moments putting it all into perspective art assemblage collage and other inspiring ideas and let's go outside and paint i think that's it is there more no that's it 
So again, this one, here's different kinds of ways to make your own sketchbooks, drawing toolkits, you know, and now, you know, here they're showing you how to make your own, but you can buy these little canvas rolls and things like that, or, you know, even, you know, things like, <laughs> things like this that we get for pencils and pens and markers. Um... So here's some sketching, here's open page format, and just a whole bunch of page of one thing you're sketching. And those are like what you would do, like if you were at a, a zoo, an aquarium, the museum, you know, you could try to fit a lot on a page if you're in a hurry. I wish I could have sketched more uh, when we went to the, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, Andy Warhol exhibit, but it was literally elbow to elbow. And it, I know it was the time of day we went, and uh, I think it was a special weekend. It was either free students could go for free or something, but it, it you know, it was jammed, packed. There was not even any room to sketch. Literally, it was that, you know, everybody was just doing selfies and pictures with the paintings of the soup cans, and, you know, so we did do that, but... <laughs> Opportunity for everyday creative moments, creative doodling. So I, I don't know how much you can really see, but I just kind of want to do a flip. Different views, like there's a bird's eye view, some perspectives, a little bit of teaching on perspective. Here's how to even fold, look, here's how to fold like our zines. This is our simple zine fold here. They're, they're just calling it a folded frame. But that's the same fold you do to make a, a zine out of one page. Janet showed it the last time she streamed, I think, how to fold a, a zine out of one sheet. Watercolor mosaics, how to uh, backgrounds. Paper weaving. Janet does awesome. Let me show real quick. Now she didn't do a, a scene, but she made me a uh, an art journal out of paper weaving. That's all magical paper cut and woven to make a cover. <clears throat> so let's see what else. Let's go outside and paint. Here's just a nice uh, watercolor here. Have a little sketch right there. Have you given workshops? No, uh -uh. I'm not a teacher, Pacola. I mean, I've taught a few people individually, individual classes, but it's more just showing my technique. It's not, I'm not a teacher. I mean, I'm not, and when I say that, guys, I don't mean that you can't learn. Oh, you can't learn from me because I'm not a teacher. I don't mean that. Everybody can learn from everybody. But as far as what, how teachers do progression and teachers will stick with you, and I'm more of an inspirer. I'll inspire you and encourage you to get going. But I go from, to so many things, guys, y you know, we, y'all know, we do so many different ideas here that. I'm not, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I'll inspire you to get crack a lacking, but, you know, you're going to have to find teachers that are more specific to what you want to learn. Like, I'll show you color booking all day, but is there someone really out there selling classes on how to color book? I don't know. <laughs> you know. There's so many skills. The things that I like to teach you, if you will, are individual techniques and skills and demonstrations. That's why it never bothers me not to finish a color book page. I try sometimes to complete one from start to finish, even if it takes 10 episodes like a couple of my Bennett Klein ones do. But I'm more about showing you the technique, like the stone angel that we did um, all in monochromatic. That's a technique that you can take, and I showed enough of it, where you can take it and use that idea or technique in a project or a page or, you know what I'm saying? 
So, all oh, thanks, to Terry. Master Inspirer. Okay. All right, so let me show you some other. Uh, let me show you this one first. This one is called Painted Pages. My, this was the last book that my mother-in-law bought me before she passed away. And uh, so I really love this book. We have done, and I've cut out articles out of uh, magazines about this girl, Sarah Ahern Bellamar. And uh, this is the only book I know that she's, let me just kind of keep one at a time here. Uh, and it's a mixed media type, fueling creativity with sketchbooks and mixed media. So I have an article here. So what we did one day uh, to, to use her, to use her book uh, as inspiration to make a project. Now this is probably, I don't even know how long ago we made this. It was before I started streaming, so it was probably at least four years ago that we did this. We took a children's book, took a children's golden book, and we used her uh, projects to alter a little uh, golden book. So this is, and we we tried to emulate her funny, you know, quirky, her quirky writing and her her colors and her style. And so that's what we did. And it's not completed. There's different pages have been done and some are not. <clears throat> but this is what we did with her. Uh, see, here's we went from the background of the book here. Yeah, this was a long time ago. <laughs> I, I'm probably four, maybe five years ago. Uh, so just in different stages of testing you know how to do her technique so I keep it inside the book because last time I pulled this book out I said well we did a book on it and I, it took me forever to find it <laughs> you like this book too Eileen yeah I really like her color combinations her color sense um, so I, I now I keep this and the article if there's ever an article that I read about an artist or an author I should say what if it's in any magazine if it's a book I've read fiction nonfiction art whatever I'll keep that article and put it in the book or with the book um, so do you remove pages from this book no I did not remove any pages from this book I rarely tear up uh, technique art technique books it's just not the kind of book that I use imagery out of I don't I, I don't even know that I can say I really ever not I'm not gonna say never but I rarely if ever except maybe in a magazine journal which has already got the art in it you know like our little mini magazine or the larger magazine journals where I'm really painting out and around things I mean in something like an altered magazine or my altered mini magazines um, I don't use other people's art in my mixed media collage and those are just for us to play in so, you know it's not anything we're doing anything with except just practicing our blending shading coloring sense writing our ideas in you know so I would rarely if ever tear up a uh, not because I have any you know sentimental value to it except like this one my mother-in-law gave me it's not that I don't have any qualms about take tearing up a book that I want to use it's just that it's not stuff I'm using it's just not stuff I use in my collage you know okay so anyway let's do a flip through this this one came out in 2011 and it's a quarry book I love quarry books the publisher quarry books they're just awesome and uh, again I'm just gonna kinda do a flip tell you the chapters and um, uh, chapter one starting out seek it out write it out pick it out work it out and then a gallery those are the chapter titles and so you see she gives you little demos and little uh, and uh, at the time of this book she was working off of one small desk now I'm not saying she never went to the kitchen table and worked it there or something like that but she shows her workspace and at the time she did this book she was working off of one little desk and uh, so yeah she's worked did all this off of a small area and so here's where she does her little demos and step outs so you know she wants you to try her techniques and we did 
we we followed along with old Sarah here, <laughs> and we just did it in a uh, children's book. I think she does hers on little canvas boards and in sketchbooks and you know um, here's I think this was the top of her desk there there's all her stuff her pin board her, you know bulletin board pin board and there's her supplies her paints and you know stacked up and you know but uh, she I think there's a couple pictures of her desk in here so here's where she's working in some little mini sketchbooks, some warm-up activities. And see, she draws very, like, childlike on purpose. Uh, you know, she more than likely can draw uh, more, you know, realistic, if you will. But she purposefully draws that way in a lot of her work. And so that's what we did here, too. I hear the diva out there meowing. But she meows and you go up to her and she runs. <laughs> so, well, she'll get used to us though, hopefully. But we're, we're calling her the diva. <laughs> so, again, she does have some little sketches and studies and ideas. So, you, you know, you don't have to have everybody has different ways and things to express their creativity you don't have to draw or color or you know do it like anybody else here's a, a lot of just drawing individual things like um, how about Danny Gregory books where it's draw every day and draw in your world and all that and that's that kind of thing here um, pick it out incorporating collections start your own collections here she has a whole bunch of little letters and words um, so fill your sketchbook pages with glassine envelopes to hold ticket stubs and old photographs well we all know you know collage fodder right rip out a page from an old book use sewing patterns and a lot of this stuff we've done you know again this book's been out a while 2011 and so, you know, we all use collage fodder a lot, you know, especially in our mixed media and our uh, uh, altered books and all of that. So I just want to kind of give you all a little brief looks at them. I love the book. I love that it's just eye candy. Here's little boxes of stuff she's got, like little trays, little printer trays of stuff. Finding your rhythm. Here's some creative process. More of her sketchbooks. And I, I, I collect books on sketchbooks. I don't even, can't even tell you how many books I have on sketchbooks. Books of, of other artists' sketchbooks are some of my favorite books to uh, collect. I just picked this stack right here because of the mixed media altered book aspect. And, uh, you know, I knew we had altered a book based on this one, so I pulled that one, okay? And again, I, did, I only pulled a couple that were mixed media collage. If we get through this stack, then I have tons of ones of books. I have a whole nother stack I can pull out just on collage. Um, but these are the ones I pulled here, the two or three maybe. Um, they are mixed media collage, not just collage. You know, they're, they're not just focused on collage. Okay, this one is by Holly Harrison, an exploration of contemporary artist methods and materials. And this one is by, who puts this one out? Um, Corey. Are y'all liking this? Are y'all chilling with some coffee and watching some books? I know, so much inspiration. I love art books. This was 2007. I'll read y'all the chapter titles. Well, this one has two sections. Section one has profiles. And then engineering. Oh, then it's got one, two, three. It's got like five different uh, artists, including Tisha Moore is profiled in this. Then section two is a gallery of artists in the internet and collage. Okay, so this is more of a book on uh, exploring the techniques of profiling, profiling the artists to, uh, that she covers. 
okay so again any kind of this is all here's collage basics you know it's got your basic supplies your basic glossary things like that and then the different profile here's a little quick little uh, synopsis of the artist profiled and then it starts with um, this this particular artist does dimensional art so this one's a dimensional I'm not going to read it or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of give you all a flip through. Creating faux encaustics. So this is with the wax um, type of um, art here. Printmaking. A little bit of printmaking here. Each artist has a different technique that they focus on celebrating the natural world so here's different it looks like sewing and banners and collage with fabric it looks like some of it's just printed at like their artwork printed on fabric how to sew these banners here's another one here quilted type things and then here of course we all recognize Tisha Moore Okay, bye, CB. Take care down there in Texas. Okay, then how she starts her books and her journals. And, you know, she loves using uh, magazine images and re-cutting them up and re-putting uh, them together in different ways. You know, taking the eyes off of one and putting it on another. Like, here's an example. The eyes from one image and top of the other image recombining faces that's kind of like Tisha Moore's thing you know <laughs> and also the big writing like this the writing in the backgrounds she's like known for that too stamping and writing this one's stamped um, I think we all pretty much have heard it maybe not everybody here but you know, we've been a, if you've been around mixed media collage, altered books, art journals, then you know you've heard of Tisha Moore if you've been around for any length of time. Then here's a gallery at the back of all the, I guess, the artists that they profiled. Maybe some other ones as well. Yeah, it looks like other ones as well. Just different galleries of mixed media. And collage so yeah so that's mixed media collage it's like compiled by Holly Harrison with a contemporary artist by Corey yeah zetiology thank you zetiology that's what uh, let me take a sip of coffee uh, that Tisha Moore does zetiology okay Alphabetica. This is Lynn Perella. In Lynn per and I think I'm pronouncing that right. Lynn Perella, and there's another one too. I'll think of her name. Probably have her book too, because I've got a lot of Lynn Perellas. Um, anyway, that are always featured and off and on and and regularly in Somerset Studio. Um, they usually have profile. You know, they usually have special articles by Lynn and one or two others. I can't think of their names right now, but anyway, I've got two books by Lynn Perel. I've got the Artist Journals and Sketchbooks and Alphabetica. I think I have a third, but it's not in this stack. Anyway, so Alphabetica. Let me see which one came out first. This one's 2006 by Corey. This one is 2004. So this one came out first. So you can see <laughs> artist journals and um, altered books. I mean, of course, collage has been around forever, too. Um, but as far as art journals, they've been around for a long time. <laughs> you know a long long time so uh, exploring and creating personal pages okay 
So again, I'm going to kind of just give you all, here's a Tisha Moore right here. So I'm guessing that there's different uh, artists profiled in this too. Contributing artists. So she has chapters like Getting Started, The Book Itself, True Fiction, Icons and Imagery, Expanding the Boundaries, Exploring Alternative Surfaces and Forms. So there's probably some uh, blank journal starting out here and probably also some, you know, altered book featured. I love the colors. Look at that. Just Doesn't that just inspire you just to look at these colors? This right here reminds me of the colors of um, Dina, no, Di Reevely. Reevely uh, Di Diane Reevely? I get, I get Dinah Wakely and Dina Reevely. <laughs> I always get them two mixed up, so don't email me. Um, you might recognize some of this uh, kind of look from Somerset as well. Here's collaging on mailing envelopes. So this is like one of the, uh, you know, your manila envelopes. Bye, Scoops. Thank you. I'm trying to, Diva will get used to us, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you too, Scoobs. Uh, so they just talk about different uh, uh, books, envelopes, building up a base. It looks like this is a altered book here, mixed media art journals working with photocopies. It looks like on this one they took the same girl. And I've, it's been a while since I've actually gone and read these. You know, the last time I probably looked at this book was when I showed it to y'all a year or so ago. You know? Yeah, this one is an awesome book. And so they took the same girl, this photograph, and they've manipulated it into all these different, you know, colored her, uh, and just different ways of manip manipulating the same photograph and she's made all these bookmarks and tags so like this and she's got them numbered here a photocopy and it's a stencil stencil onto old documents and letters adding dimension there's buttons all over that one excuse me uh, using stencils for negative and positive reusing stencils and if, if all else fails guys just glue down the stencil <laughs> oh don't ask me how i know okay follow your passions use a favorite quote to start your page here's just again using little um uh, found relatives as we like to call them <laughs> are we still in focus guys i don't know i hope so more found relatives and it talks about integrating your rubber stamps drips and splatters tissue paper all the things that you know those of us that have been doing art journals for a long time have tried in some form or another right <laughs> yeah you like that linda uh so anyway yeah <laughs> This is Lynn Whipple. I don't know if the Whipples are still... I haven't seen Lynn Whipple and the Whipples. This is a husband and wife. Uh, did a lot of... Um, uh, this look with red, black, and white. And this kind of look right here. Everything they did look kind of like this. And I don't know... The, I haven't looked them up lately. Uh, we should look up the Whipples. Uh, all about image transfers. So here's different ones. Gel medium with an inkjet. Gel medium with an inkjet transparency. Water transfer of inkjet transparency. Solvent transfer of a color copy. Solvent transfer of a, transfer of a black and white toner copy. Packing tape. We've done the packing tape here. Gel medium. Matte medium. So it's got a little explanation of how to do the transfers. And here's examples of all of them. It's very, this like, even Eileen just said, this is a good book. Um, using, a, like, I think she, this person, um, Leslie, Leslie Riley. That's the other one that's always in um, Somerset. Leslie Riley. And uh, 
it looks like they just used a little scrapbook, you know, photograph book, a little black photograph book for these projects. And then here's Tisha Moore, of course. We recognize her style. <laughs> More, this is Lynn Perella. Uh, Ann Bagley. That's another one. Ann Bagley's always in Somerset. This is more Lynn. Ann Bagley here. I think I think uh, Eileen knows one. Of, or was taking a class with... Was it Ann Bagley? One of them. I think Eileen took a class with one of them some time ago. The book itself, Examining Covers and Types of Journals. Here's different ones, stitched ones, bound ones. You know, here's probably all the different uh, Coptic stitching. Cigar store, uh, angel, a cigar box to make a book, to make these books out of. Um, just, you know, all different kinds of books. Slide mounts, that was real popular for, you know, when this came out. Uh, doing little slide mount art, like we do uh, ATCs. Of course, ATCs have been around since probably what? The 40s? The 50s? I forget. It's been a long time since I researched the, a the history of the ATC. I think it was a Nor was it a Norwegian guy? And he didn't have he, somehow he didn't have business cards. I'm I'm probably messing up this story completely, but I think he didn't have business cards or something, and so he made his own. And so each little business card was a little piece of art, and that's how and he would trade them or he would like get people's uh, business cards and hand his. So he was like starting to trade them, and that's how. Artist trading cards, something like that. I think he was Norwegian. Uh, funky fabric journals, attachments, so you know, dimensional items. You y'all were you did Leslie and I've known each other for years. Eileen said they were when they were doll makers. Yeah, I knew that one of them. You knew one of them here, uh, Eileen. And then here's a, just a bunch of tags, different tags with different things, tickets and, you know, all the stuff that we, we now know. But at the time, this was quite, this was quite uh, innovative, this book. Mandalas, let's see, did I miss a page there? Haiku, a haiku journal. So yeah, goals, prayers, I mean you can use an art journal for anything, right? Einstein book and box, a whole thing on Einstein. I mean you could do, you know, even a zine, like we did the zine on the eclipse. You could do a zine on Einstein, you can do a zine or a small journal, you know, I mean you don't have to, unless you're really into say Einstein or something specific um you'd want to maybe do a whole book but just even the ideas you know our society idea collecting just a zine on a topic will get you going decorators file here's all different things on like your color schemes if you're like to decorate whether or fashion you know whether this this one's on a uh you know home decorating but you could do the same thing for fashion Travel sketchbooks. So this is just all different kinds. Um, little mini. This looks like a four by four. You made fabric dolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I 
I'm surprised you never you didn't never come across uh, Barb when y'all were doing that, Eileen, because Barb also did uh, fabric dolls back then. Okay, so that's artist journals and sketchbooks. Lynn Perella. Okay, and then also by her is Alphabetica, the A to Z creative creativity guide for collage and book artists. Let me get a sip of coffee, guys. Okay, again, Corey, I think, did we say 2010 on this one? Six. This is 2006. And she uses the alphabet. Look at all these little alphabet ways to use stencils and alphabets. And then what she has here, listen, this is, let me read them to you real quick. Key to the Alphabetica grid. A is for altered, B is for brown bags, C is for crackle, D is for drips, E is for envelopes, F is for feathers, G is for gesso, H is for hinges, I is for ink, J is for junk, K is for knots, L is for letters, M is for music, N is for nature, O is for openings, P is for positive and negative, Q is for quotations, R is for rubber, S is for stencil, T is for transparencies, U is for umber, V is for vellum, W is for wax, X is for Xerox, Y is for yarn, Z is for zigzag, and then 0 to 9 is for found objects. So those are the, that's the key to what she used. Like, look, all the numbers here, if it's a number, it's a found object. Yeah, I know, Eileen goes, that's another great book. <laughs> and it's like this, you know, even though some of the stuff that sh they use in these kind of books from 2004, 5, 6, whenever, it, we've used that stuff for, uh, you know, since then. And you probably, oh, I already know to use tissue or I already know to use stencils. But look, did you use it like this? <laughs> you know, it's like it's just so much for eye candy. Here's P is for plaid. And she they altered a um, vintage uh, lunchbox. Remember these? Do y'all remember? Who, who remembers these plaid lunchbox? These metal ones. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's a gnat right there. Gnat, go away, gnat. So, yeah. I mean, just the eye candy alone. And I'm sure these books are a lot less than when I bought them. Because I bought them when... Now, this one is a, would be probably a... Uh, you know, uh, second issue because it's a softback. Unless it came out. It might have come out in a hardback. I don't remember. Eileen, do you have the hardback? <laughs> uh, so I think that, yeah, the hardback. No, let's see. That's that handicraft. Where is it? Hardback. Um, might have come out in a hardback before the soft cover. <laughs> Yep, the lunchbox and the soup thermos. That's right. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of do a quick flip. I only wanted to spend about an hour here going through some books on uh, altered books and uh, altered, um, a little bit of mixed media and altered, altered books. Since that's what we did today was alter a book. Really? The metal lunchboxes are coming, making a comeback? I'll have to look for those because that would be kind of cool <laughs> just to have. I mean, I think they'd be cool. Now, I'm one that does my organization. It has, I have to be able to see it. I don't put things, I mean, I do have some things in those plastic drawers and stuff, but I know every drawer has its own thing. But if I have everything hidden away in a box that I can't see into and in even a clear plastic, I will forget about it. So I have to have my stuff where I can see it cause, so I remember to use it. Some people, that makes them nervous. All their supplies out in the open where they, they're overwhelmed by the visual 
visual activity of it of seeing all your supplies out in the open but that's how I like to roll so my room is wall-to-wall -wall shelves and then and I can see everything not you know put away in drawers like my for I'll give you a perfect example I have you know one of those towers those uh, drawer towers and I put all my foam stamps in all those drawers I have that many foam stamps they're in a drawer in those drawers I always forget I have them because they're in drawers. <laughs> you know, I have to be able to see my stuff to be able to, you know, trans more transfer techniques, all different kinds here, solvent transfer, matte medium, all the different transfers, and then here's some of the artist workshops here in the back where they give you some demos of uh, their techniques in the back here quite a few quite a few uh, demos so that's alphabetica the a to z creativity guide for collage and book artist not to be confused with our alphabetica that we did with file folders <laughs> you have a complete little cool ones from pack or die they came candy yeah, I, I'm not sure what, what, you have a couple of what, little books, Jean? I miss some of that, some of that rolled off. They have them in the dollar bins at Target all the time. The vint the metal ones, Sarah? Okay, Alter Books. This is by Rockport. Again, Holly Harrison com compiled this. Alter Books, Collaborative Journals, and Other Adventures in Bookmaking. Now... Again, I did not pull out, I have a whole bunch of books on how to make books, book binding, book, you know, making books. And I also have a whole bunch of books on just collage. I, I tried to just, even though I have a couple here, like, here's the next one I'll show you, is altered book collage. So it kind of crosses over. <clears throat> but I didn't pull all out all my books on how to make books that kind of thing. I'm kind of just trying to keep it with the altered books. Okay. This one came out in 2003. You've been... <laughs> hey, Marie. Good to see you. The Metal Lunchbox of Sarah. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, so this one has got chapter one, altered books, co collaborations, and other funky tomes. So, and then it's broken out with each of the different artists. But again, I'm just trying to give you all a little peruse. Some of the kind of books to play with. Add, all right, so you all know I'm using, uh, for mine, I'm using the, my two uh, Abandoned Places, the Abandoned Places book and the, uh, what's it called, Eileen gave me, the Forgotten Heritage. They're Abandoned Places books. Well, here she's telling you you can use old address books, children's books, coffee table books, dictionaries, old atlases, even phone books, pulp fiction, romance novels, textbooks, vintage books, your favorite novel. So there's some of the books you can play with. So again, I'm just going to do a flip through here, laying out a page, digital art. Of course, this was, you know, early in the digital art I mean, Photoshop's been around a while, but I mean, you know, playing with it like this. Some fun things to do with books. Lists of that. So I'm just going to kind of flip here. If something strikes me, I'll, I'll uh, say it. Here's kind of a scrapbooky look. Kind of like the, um, what do you call it? Um... What were those called? The books where, um, why is it escaping me? It's, um, smash books, like smash book type thing, where they've collected a bunch of ticket stubs and, you know, maybe an old photograph and it's a smash book. I have a couple of those still on my shelf. Uh, the small ones, and then I even have the big 14 by 
12 by 14 one, the huge Mama Jamba smash book. And they pretty much came with like spiral bound scrapbook papers. And, you know, you could put pockets and smash book. Yeah. No, we never stopped playing. <laughs> and you would, uh, there were spiral bounds, and, and so they were like bound uh, scrapbook papers. Well, I've done my own kind of versions of that with, let me see if I can pull them up. I've made my own kind of books with, here's just one version, uh, my own kind of books with um, scrapbook papers. So here's a cut down a uh, two inch binder and it's all this is all scrapbook papers scrapbook papers and where I've all started to alter some uh, collage on some and then the white ones that you see are just the back sides of the so that you'd have room to write so if you have the kind of scrapbook papers that may not be double sided then mm. you you can journal and do other things on the back side of the of the scrapbook paper. So here's this papers here, but the back side of this particular one was white. So now you've got room to play on that. And I did <laughs> did a whole two inch binder. That's all scrapbook paper. And it's I believe it's six inch. So I cut all the papers in half. So that's 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 something you can do with your leftover scrapbook papers if you don't know what to do with them. You can uh, cut them in half and put them in a binder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh. Okay, or you could cut them down to six by six and make a smaller one. Because, you know, the 12 inch uh, uh, scrapbook papers are 12 inch. So you can cut them down to six, you know, get four sheets out of there. Uh, all right. Anyway. This is from the Thousand Journal Project. Now, I think that's different than the one, the, the Thousand Journals that I have the book on. It's not one that I pulled here. But it has the Thousand uh, Journals, Art Journals. That one came out, I think it was a Don Sokol's that put that one together. Um, I think this Thousand Journal is a different uh, project here. So, yeah. Creative Binding. Gallery of Book Pages in the back here. So this just gets you inspired, you know. I'm not trying to make you go enable you. Here's like using a children's book. I'm not trying to get you to enable you. I'm trying to inspire you. Go at least put them in your cart. Doesn't hurt to put them in your cart. Okay, then altered book collage. Barbara Matheson. This is a hardback, so um, this one came out in 2005 yeah different projects 2005 and again I'm going to just kind of cover some of the contents and then flip what is collage what to do with your altered book building a page general supplies general instructions 101 ways to alter a book techniques for decorating book pages altered book cover and page ideas watercolor using leaves and the, all this right here are different uh, uh, ideas page ideas so again I'm just gonna flip usually have your list of you know supplies stamps stencils papers embellishments tools general instructions are we still are we still focused guys Am I, do I need to, I think, I don't know that I need to zoom in. I think we're good for you just to be able to kind of peruse, right? Embossing, polymer clay, transfers. B 
beaded triangle book. That's something that Eileen's made some cool books. Eileen is more talented than she lets on. I guess she wants to keep it a secret. <laughs> Mono printing, uh, printing with leaves. nature journals, using game pieces. I've made multiple books out of uh, game boards and, and book rings. Well, they're actually rings that are made for uh, embroidery floss, big old rings, big old. <laughs> Vintage script, fabric, needlework, travel journals fashion all this that I'm telling you guys y'all need to have uh, your idea collecting journals out <laughs> um, a world an atlas using atlases and geography books I mean uh, just think of making a travel journal out of an old geography book based on the country that you or or state or wherever that you visit you know it does need a bit of focusing okay thank you all right let's go ahead and let's try to zoom in one and maybe do a little extra focusing how's that is that any better and i might need to darken it a little because of the lightness of the page might turn the brightness down just a little. Okay, how's that? Is that any better? All right, this is a Cory book, The Complete Guide to Altered Imagery, Mixed Ma Media Techniques for Collage, Altered Books, Artist Journals, and More by Karen Michael. Okay. Well, part of it's probably because I'm going back and forth from white pages to color, and it kind of freaks out the camera 2005 okay again the contents altered imagery using photography altered imagery using your computer altered imagery from found sources altered imagery using printmaking techniques and then a gallery so all kinds of stuff this is using photography using uh, and I'll tell you who did some altered stuff with that with photography let's see if I can find the books right off the bat and that is hang on ah here we go these ladies Linda Woods and Karen Danino they did these journal revolution and visual chronicles and they used a lot of uh, photography imagery for their altered books and their um, imagery i don't really want to get into these right now but journal revolution and visual chronicles oprah had them on her show back in when was this at when did this come out 2007 um, one or both of them were on Oprah and apparently it really helped with the art journal phenomena when Oprah had them on <laughs> so thanks Terry thanks yeah y'all have to let me know because I'm always fussy with the camera and everybody goes oh it was fine it wasn't fuzzy at all it wasn't dark it wasn't too light and then you know I go back and look at well, okay if y'all say so so you have to let me know anyway um, that one and then this was I think their second one visual chronicles and it, that's the no fear guide to creating art journals create creative manifestos and altered books this one came out in 2006 and what did I say the seven so maybe this one came out first and uh, so anyway they um, yeah they they show you from the very very basics of art journaling I mean from painting and stamping so the, these two books right here they'll f like free you up to not be afraid to do it but at the same time they're not um, they're not as in-depth 
they're they're more on the simple side, your basic side of art journaling. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back in here. Oh, so anyway, what I was saying is they did a lot with photograph uh, manipulation. And then here, you know, we we'll see that that's what they're doing here. Photo manipulation. So I'm just going to kind of do a flip. Then here's a section on using your computer imagery. Of course, anybody that does Photoshop and all that nowadays, you know, Eileen would think this is probably very, very basic. But altered imagery using printmaking. So, you know, carving your own stamps, printing, you know, doing your own printing and altering your prints. And we've done some... Um, stamp carving here. It's been a while. Maybe we should do another stamp carving show. Haven't done one of those for a while. I think Barb did one not too long ago too. Um, well, it's been a little while. Not that long. A couple months or something. And look, here's again the Whipple. See, look, I recognize this right off. Lynn Whipple. Because of the style. This is just a style that every time you just recognize Lynn Whipple. Oh, Connie, you ordered the What You Mean, What's the Zine? Yeah. I oh, good. Yeah, that's a fun book. And see, anything, any of these techniques that I'm showing you in any of these books, you can use them in a zine. You know, you can use them all, you know, make, and there's, these are ideas in my mind. These are ideas to explore. Altered Books Workshop. This one is by Bev Brazelton. And it's by Northlight, Altered Books Workshop. And it came out in 2004. Thanks, Terry, for putting in all the links. It's your birthday. You should be sitting back and enjoying it. Did you get your card, by the way, Terry? Have you got your birthday card yet? Um, hopefully. I know it's going to a P.O. box, so you probably have to go get it <laughs> since you moved. I'm pretty sure. I think it's going to a P.O. box. I, I hope I didn't send it to your old address. I hope they'll forward it if I did. No, I'm pretty sure I sent it to your new address, Terry. I think. I don't, not, you know, though, what, Terry? It's probably not your brand new house. It's probably your P.O. box from your other house. I just thought of that. Okay, Janet says she finally came up with a good idea for a new zine. Maybe I'll work on it this weekend. Okay, yay, tweet. I don't know I'll make it, but please record, Janet. Please record. If I can't make it. So, Terry, I, don't, I hope that they'll forward it from the house you just moved to. I should have thought of that. Your birthday card probably went to your old house. If it comes back to me, I'll send it out again. I'm waiting on the chat lag. Let me flip while I'm waiting. Because <laughs> Getting started. Basic techniques, intermediate techniques, creative techniques. No card? Okay. I'm thinking, Terry, I sent it to a P.O. box. It will be forwarded. Okay. All right. Well, let me know. Okay. Well, of course, if it's returned, I'll send it on again. But, yeah, I need your newest address. Your new, new. Your new, new. Because <laughs> I was thinking, well, she just moved, and I have her P.O. box. But then you moved again. <laughs> You'll record just for me. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> Upstairs says something about a sister wanted us to come down to the lake. So depending on the weather, we may not be here. So I don't know. During the day. Adding inserts and pockets. Intermediate techniques here. Oh, look. Oh, this is this just so reminds me of Xandra. Yeah, I got to send her all those shells. I'm sending those uh, shells to Xandra to make something with when she's uh, back to streaming. Cutting the covers. 
using the covers of books for and look like here taking a book there and altering it adding fibers and beads I know we've all done that a zillion times since this right so that's altered books uh, altered books workshop all right let's see what else we got you got a few more oh, well I've already gone over an hour but oh well <laughs> we'll stay for 30 more minutes it's only 1215 altered art techniques for creating altered books boxes cards and more Terry Taylor it's a hardback um, see this one I bought this was 1995 so I mean a hardback like this now would probably be 25 30 bucks but this is this like this book is probably out in soft cover now um, 2004 by Lark books 2004 altered art basics altered books boxes and tins cards tags and games and altered objects this I think I got this book when I thought you know I really want to do some three-dimensional and I do have they're in the garage so I'm not gonna go get them right now but I have done some altered like you know cigar boxes and painted them and did you know some real cool uh, what you call it who and what's his name the artist that would um, Joseph Cornell jo Joseph Cornell <laughs> inspired boxes and I just found for me, and you have to be able to willing to admit it. It's just, you know, if something is not for you, you know, admit it and move on. But at the time when I was making altered boxes, I thought, oh, I love, I'm going to love this. Uh-uh, I didn't. I made, I don't know, I don't know how many I made. I think I kept five or six. They're in the garage. But it's, no, it's just not me. I don't enjoy dimensional uh, I'm just not a 3D dimensional artist. I don't enjoy the process. You know, I think it started, it gets frustrating if you don't, if you have to use, you know, glues that are like E5000, what is that? <laughs> E5000, 3000. You got to use these like, you know, industrial st strength glue to, because you got, you know, metal and, you know, uh, it just wasn't me. I tried. I really did try. <laughs> thanks Terry thank you uh, I you still owe me a building project from your dirty hand stream I do I don't remember Jean do I owe you I'll just, I'll just send you one of those cigar you don't have room for a cigar box Jean <laughs> Gee, girl, you're trying to downsize. I'm not going to send you a dimensional box. I'll send you some art cards. <laughs> some ATCs. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Let me, uh, and here's uh, Claudine Helmuth. I've got two or three of her books. I think I got three of her books. Her two books and a scrapbook uh, thing. Idea generating something. Uh, what was it? I don't think, I don't know if I have it in here. Might be downstairs. I took all my scrapbooking um, idea books downstairs. And I think that particular book, I have her other two up here, her collage books. But the uh, that one, I think it's downstairs. Oh, no, wait, here it is. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm pulling all my books off the shelf. Well, no, I'm not really. <laughs> Okay, so these are the two other Claudine Helmuth ones I have. Collage Discovery Workshop and Collage Discovery Beyond the Unexpected. And you all know Claudine does, uh, or did, I haven't, I don't keep up with her anymore either. Um, she would take photographs of real people and, ter and, and do commission portraits based off of, you know, like real people. Not all of them, I don't know if this one is. But she would do commission work using the person's photograph and and using turning it into black and white and then making kind of you know simplistic type and and i use simplistic in the and that does not mean non-artistic it's sometimes very hard to do a, a good some simple piece of artwork compositionally that works colors that work et cetera et cetera Okay, let's see. What did Jean say? Was she fussing about me? 
Oh, you wanted me to build a project you could watch me build? A, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Count that, Jean. Although I didn't do it on camera. <laughs> My pencil pen storage bin. Yeah. <laughs> got it, Jean. I got it. I got it. And uh, so anyway, and, and again, Claudine's very, very step out oriented because she does workshops or did I don't again haven't kept up with her uh, so she ta taught and teaches and she was on the ranger team for a while anyway and she had her own like matte mediums and brushes and all that and uh, I forgot what I was going to say <laughs> anyway so collage discovery the unexpected and then the collage discovery workshop i think this was the first one anyway so i have those and i just oh because she's in this book this was the other one that i was uh separate that because i have them separated on my shelf this is back you know when i was scrapbooking now i gotta say this was toward the end when i really wasn't scrapbooking that much i still did some but i wasn't in you know two peas in a bucket i think it closed and that was where everybody hung out for um you know the, uh, groups of people hung out at two peas and did contest and you know we all enabled and uh they always had, you know, different contests for your pages, and it was just fun. Bye, Marie. Well, anyway, this came out toward the end of that time. Uh, the Scrapbooker's Creativity Kit, and I don't, I, I hate to say it, guys, I don't think I ever used this not one time. Uh, prompts and ideas to jumpstart your layouts. But it came in a little box, had a little mini Scrapbooker's Creativity Kit. I think I bought it, you know, because of the cute factor. <laughs> we get sucked in. Easy. The cute factor. The cute factor gets us every time. You had a weekend with Claudine years ago, Terry? Awesome. And so it has a little idea, you know, a little book of, and I, I'm sure she had some contributors. Yeah, she did. These are all different people. Uh, Selena Vero. And if you were ever in two Ps, you probably recognize every single one of these names. Donna Downey. <laughs> Rona Far Farrar. Anyway, so a little mini, mini idea book. It's probably, I guess it's about a five by five, something like that. And then they have, she has a little color, and in here in the book it tells you how to use it. But look, she has little color, color uh, cards so that you could like pick car random colors. Um, and I don't know why I thought I needed this because. <laughs> Where is my, uh, I don't even know where I put it. I have every color chip imaginable for, oh, here. <laughs> I have a lanyard. I have a lanyard full of color chips. <laughs> These are all the basil color chips. I have every color of basil cardstock color. And my other, um... Uh, cards of inspiration so I have a full whoops sorry guys I have a full on lanyard of that stuff <laughs> I don't know oh my goodness All right. let's hang that back up uh oh where did my nail go my nail fell okay I'll have to fix that back up something else to lay on the floor until I get done here and then uh some little cards <laughs> that would give you like friend, neighbor, alone, wrinkle, chill, drive, magic, bloom, escape, match, all different little word prompts. Again, I don't know why I thought I needed this <laughs> with my big idea notebooks, but I did. It's the cute factor. All right, so let's go back to this book. The uh, Altered Art book. <laughs> oh my goodness. All kinds of stamps here. And then showing all kinds of embellishment ideas. And your supplies. The basics. How to take a book. Cut. You can. How to cut into books to make uh, doors. 
and windows and uh, you know set ins and then just taking all different kinds of books and altering them in different ways sewing books pattern books old-fashioned books um, this is a tin box here so cigar boxes books game boards and game pieces yeah but it's cute exactly she challenged you to do something with the color chips <laughs> I like them for color combination inspiration, although I gotta say I don't use it anymore. I don't use those chips. They just look pretty hanging on my wall. <laughs> I have a little wall. I literally have a wall space. Like, other than my big jean um, Mona Lisa, which is over my closet doors, <laughs> uh, I have very little wall space. Okay. It's all shelves. Room, the whole room is shelves. All right, let's finish these three more up real quick. Making and Keeping Creative Journal, Suzanne Tortilliot. And this one is by Lark Books. Um, 2001. 2001. So this, yeah, 16-year-old book. I mean, that's how long, all, you know, well, altar books probably been around since the mid medieval days, but, you know, as a, uh, why I need to be, <laughs> sorry, chat break reading, the art of journal writing, all just different kinds of, this is probably one of the oldest ones that I have, 2001, no, I think I have, well, we'll see. And I have all kinds of books on book making and things like this one has a lot of book making, sewing, you know, a lot of that in here. This is like on the cusp of the popularity of art journals, I think, because it's not really a lot. Well, there you are. There's some. It's more, it's more journal making the actual books and a little bit of decorating on the covers. A lot of stitching. I never didn't. I never have liked to sew. I did embroidery back in the 70s on jean jackets and stuff. Never liked sewing. You know, never sewing machine, hand sewing, stitching, making books. Uh uh. Just do not like. I don't like sewing. Oh, that's just me. Everybody has their favorite things. But this is a lot of hand stitching. Oh, now there's a little bit of more what we would consider art journaling right there. But this one's more on book binding. Actually making the books, right? Okay. Two more here. Um... Actually, we're just going to do one. We'll just finish this. We'll finish it up with this one. The Decorated Page, Journal Scrapbooks, Albums Made Simply Beautiful, Gwen D D I E H N, Dine Dean. And this one is a hardback. It came out in 2002. Again, it got a little fuzzy, guys, but we're almost done here, so. I think some of it has to do with the light coming through the window. Let's see. Let me find the contents. Materials, the basics, supplies, techniques, customizing a blank book, modifying a cover, preparing the pages, layouts, applications. So um, this may be kind of... This has a lot of sketchbook type stuff. Like, looks like a lot of field sketchbooks. Like, like... Uh, more sketchbooks than art journaling. Do you know what I'm saying? Nature journaling, note taking, some watercoloring. Of course, there's stenciling, rubber stamps. But again, a little bit of collage materials. You know, this is, uh, here's some things on illuminated books. And of course, I've got tons of books on calligraphy and illuminated manuscripts because I used to do calligraphy. 
you like this book this is a good one okay customizing alter uh, altering books Here's what looks like one made out of paper bags or out of uh, craft paper. Very cool. I think it's a paper bag book. Or it might just be deckled edges. I'm not sure. So anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoy just flipping through emblem books. And this is an old, let me read some of this. Those of us who enjoy drawing in our journals and writing and in or in our sketchbooks are part of a very long tradition. From early in the history of Western art, people have been trying to combine writing and pictures on the same sheet of parchment or paper, and the two systems of meaning-filled marks have existed in uneasy relationship with one another. Either the meaning of the pages conveyed mainly by the text, with the illustrations providing some enjoyable but non-essential non embellishment, or the illustration is the most important element, with the text merely labeling or identifying it. Rarely have text and visuals formed a seamless and balanced whole. In fact, some contemporary linguists tell us that the mental process needed to decode text are different from those that we have that we use to make sense of images which perhaps accounts for some of the sense of shifting gears that we often experience when we move between reading text and looking at images and it, <clears throat> here's what I was getting at an early example of an attempt to combine text and image in equal relationship is the 16th and century emblem books E-M-B-L-E-M, -E emblem. <clears throat> Emblems were combination of a picture, either a woodcut or an engraving, and a motto, which served as a title and a short verse or prose passage. By reading the verse and viewing the image, the reader was able to interpret a moral meaning or lesson. Emblem books, which were collections of emblems, were a popular meaning of education throughout Europe at that time. <clears throat> what sets the emblem book apart from other illustrated books is the density of symbolism in the images. Some scholars consider them to be, in part, an attempt to create and define a pictographed language, something like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. In the world of medieval Europe, every plant, animal, insect, celestial body, and human figure was endowed with meaning that was beyond the literal meaning of the object. So, and it goes on. But that was uh, emblem books where they would have more meaning and symbology. And see, I love symbology. I love it. I love secondary, third, tertiary meanings to words and symbols. And so I would love to actually see some emblem books in real life. I've seen a lot of ancient, well, you know, uh, very old manuscripts in some uh, museums and things like that. But I don't re remember ever seeing emblem books in person. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting into the reading now. I'm going to have to go back and read this. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll have to look that up. Emblem books, guys. Emblem books. Drawing Closer, Nature Journaling. And I've got all kinds of books on nature. I didn't pull all those books either. So if there's any books that y'all want to see, if you're watching this recording and you're interested in seeing, you know, like nature journaling or sketching or, you know, something in particular... You know, I probably have a, at least a few books on it, if you're interested. Song Catcher Journal. That's like Jean likes to do songs um, in her journals, although she's like kind of into watercoloring right now. But, yeah. So, that is called The Decorated Page. Journal scrapbooks and albums made simply beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of Daisy V. D Daisy Vicky says, me. 
Dee Dee is showing us books. Hubs. Uh oh. Ah, <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to head out. That's all I'm going to show y'all today. Well, like I said, if you have any specific kind, specific kind of book, uh, art journaling, sketching, drawing, calligraphy, anything, let me know, and I'll try to pull some, and we will, uh, and we'll, you know, show them, talk about them, enable them, <laughs> all the above. <laughs> Yeah, I do have nature and sketching books. Oh, let me just pull a couple real quick for you, Carol TMD. Um, if I can just, like, put my hand right on them. Hang on. Um, and I got a whole bunch more on making books. I didn't pull those out. Uh, let's see. Let me pull. Okay, here. I'll pull four. I won't. I won't get in depth with them, Carol TMT, but here's four that I just pulled off the shelf. Nature journaling, and I have more by, this one here is by Claudia Nice. I have two or three by her, but I just pulled one. Okay, so this is nature journaling, learning to observe and connect with the world around you. Claire Walker Leslie and Charles E. Roth, and it was put out by uh, Storybooks. It's all about nature sketching, okay, uh, nature journaling. And this one came out, and these are a little older, I think, 1998. So this one's like almost 20 years old. And it's all on how to go out in nature and sketch nature, getting started. If y'all want, we can do more in-depth of these later, but I just want to give y'all, since Carol asked, I'll give y'all a couple of titles to go and look at on Amazon or whatever until you get time, time to, uh, we'll get time to look at them. This is quite an extensive book, but that's one, Nature Journaling. Again, Claudia Nice, I have two or three, four books by her. This one's How to Keep a Sketchbook Journal. Again, she has, I have two or three books on her on pen and ink, how to do pen and ink sketching. And I didn't pull those, I just pulled this one. But again, she has lots of uh, very in-depth sketching, drawing, how to draw in different ways with pencil, pen and ink, uh, lots of, uh, and back then when we, when we said ink, if you didn't use a dip brush and pen, you used technical pens. Let's see if she has that in here. You know, the Mars, Stedler, there's a couple different brands. Let's see if she has it in here. Uh, there's her brushes. Does she show the pens? You know, the technical pens that were a pain in the butt to clean and refill. She's not showing it here. Maybe it's, I might have just missed it because she shows all different techniques. Penciling, inking, drawing, you know, different ways. But yeah, so Microns took that away. <laughs> Here's some color wheels and charts. And so this one's awesome too. They're all awesome for the different reasons, you know? All different for different, like them for different reasons. But if you would like to do pen and ink and and like watercolor washes or anything like that, uh, Claudia Nice is awesome for that. And then I have, this one's quite old too, A Life in Hand, Hannah Henchman. She's been around forever. I haven't looked her up lately either. This is uh, 1991. This was probably the first book I bought or ha got on, um, as she says, called Creating the Illuminated Journal on combining writing and nature sketching. Hannah Henchman. And I think it came with a little blank sketchbook, too. I think it was like a combo thing when I got it. And uh, 1991. And she shows, you know, it's like pre-Danny Gregory. <laughs> Look, it's even falling apart. Uh, like drawing everything. Except she, it, she pretty much, I think, stuck with nature. Not, well, there's a pair of scissors there. But pretty much nature journaling. A Life in Hand, Hannah Henchman. And it's just a little paperback. The last one I'm going to show you right here is uh, Hannah Henchman as well. 
I don't answer any phone call that has all zeros. How does that even happen? All zeros. Anyway, um, let me turn off the... Um, a Trail Through Leaves. This one's Hannah Henchman as well. Uh, the Journal as a Path to Place. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she lost a family member or something. Died. I don't know if it was her husband or somebody. Anyway, I don't remember. Um, so, uh, I think that she used this as like therapy for herself. 1997. So, this was like six years after this one. This one is just a little, you know, like paperback. But this one's a trail through leaves. The journal as a path to place. And uh, again, lots of nature journaling. But this one's got much more text. It's got more in-depth why she, why she chose what she was drawing at the time. Um, what it meant to her at the time. <laughs> Prisma, you crack me up. Um, you know, when she would sketch every day, bees, horses, bones, leaves... And what it meant to her. Here's chapter four, the power of the ordinary. Let me just read a paragraph. <clears throat> Last March, I found in the basement an old fluorescent light fixture left over from renovation. I, it set me reading in earnest about how to start flower seedlings indoors. And pretty soon, I had cobbled together a three-by-three three plastic tented nursery in the living room with the light fixture set on the lowest rung of two ladder back chairs and a variety of kitten exclusion devices from the bottom. In four big flats, I planted seeds of foxglove, yarrow, gazinia, poppies, veronica, forget-me-not, and a whole bunch of other things, and ho hovered over them for almost an hour. And then she goes on to, you know, but that's just the first paragraph in that. So she's very in-depth in her discoveries in this book. Why she, you know, the flow of attention. And why she chose to draw and study and pay attention to the things that she paid attention to. Seeing older Seen chaos. I'm just reading some of the chapter titles. Lots of her her story in this one. Unmeasurable phenomena. She painted some storm clouds and and see she gets very in depth into the things that she's drawing and why she drew them. The world as events. Here's a whole bunch of stones and rocks that she painted. I'll just read a couple more paragraphs. I've walked hard to reach the red sandstone headwall of sheep leap draw in the Badlands, watching mostly the faint trail ahead, noting only an occasional rock wren, jingle, or the or the cuneiform jab of a deer print. If I want to continue in this vein of aerobic ground covering, I'll have to find a route on the up, up the broken rock faces and continue my trek on the mesa. If I were up there, I could see what the weather is doing in Yellowstone. This, this hunger to cover ground, gain a prominence, infects everyone who walks in Wyoming. And that's the first paragraph in that. So you can see, you know, this... Her type of uh, purpose in this book. One of the best ways I've found to participate in the world of events and bring them into the journal is through an event map. It's a simple mixture of words, images, and symbols on a page, but it achieves things that drawing alone or writing alone seems to fall short of. An event map is an actual map in that it traces your route through your route or route, however you want to say it, through a landscape as you encounter it. 
It can be more or less complex in its attention to landforms, but usually it notes or represents with illustrations or invented map devices, change in altitude, terrain underfoot, stream crossings, basic vegetation patterns, and basic geology. You keep your eye on the larger landform story. Where's the drainage? What microhabits are in this territory? How do creatures array themselves in your field of investigation? What rocks are exposed? What geological events have shaped or are shaping the places? This is especially important if it's a place you don't know well or at all. I often study topogra topographical maps of a new area before or after I visit it in order to add to my mental jigsaw puzzle of the wider territory. You see, so she, you know, does little sketches and words. And I like doing this with my sketches, but I do research on what I'm sketching like I did on the, um, you know, the armor and the... Uh, samurai and stuff like that recently but she does it on nature so when she's out walking she's notating everything that's possible to notate I would love to read books but I'm sure that there's copyright issues on fully I mean you can read paragraphs and stuff like that but like you know audio you can do a full on audio book let's put it that way you know um, a winter TP. She has. She made a TP, and um, then here's some, uh, you know, simplistic watercolors that she probably did in the field, and all kinds of little bird sketches. So yeah, Hannah Henchman, a trail through leaves, the journal as a path to place. It's a it's it's a substantial book. I mean, it's a soft cover, but it's a it's a substantial, you know, it's hefty. It's a good weight. It's good quality. Um, yeah. And I I like her writing. She's so in depth. She talks just about every little thing that she sees and notates, and um, she just like pulls you into her world of exploration. So, okay, guys, well, I'm going to head out. It's about an hour and a half or so of book chat, book chat, art book chat. But if you want to see um, anything more specifically on, you know, a certain type of art, I didn't even get to pull out my uh, Dolly books, my Salvador Dolly or, you know, uh, Surrealism or any of that yet, so... You're welcome. You're welcome, Carol. I hope these, I only pulled four off the shelf. So, <laughs> Prisma, you're so cute. I gots to go. I gots to go. You can message me, email me, Prisma. Good grief, girl. Girl! You too, Colleen. Good to see you. All right, guys. Y'all have a great weekend. And remember, Janet might try to stream uh, some zine ideas over the weekend. So, if you follow Janet, Monkey Island Madness, um, hopefully she'll do some zine streams over the weekend. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.